Okay, y'all, I am gonna try to do a video outside. <laughs> These lizards, I'm scared, okay? I'm scared of lizards. But I wanted to come on and show my face because it has been a while since I have been on because I needed a break. I needed to take care of myself. And so here I am wanting to share with you guys what's been going on with me because I believe that a lot of people are going through this and nobody is nobody even probably don't even know that that's what the hell's going on with their body or you can't stop for whatever reason and I just want to let y'all know that you need to take care of yourselves because I was at a point to where I was about to snap crackle and pop <laughs> from let's see when did this start for me kind of y'all know i've been dealing with insomnia right so i went to the naturopathic doctor found out the hormone levels was low okay fine there's a reason why i'm not sleeping so let's optimize these hormones and then i'm gonna start magically sleeping right and so got in a treatment with a wellness naturopathic doctor um, and got my hormone levels up, got everything optimized, and I was feeling worse than what I was feeling before. Um, and so I'm frustrated at this point. I think this is what, July or August, and I'm just feeling miserable because I'm frustrated and I'm, I'm not sleeping. And you can imagine that after a few um, nights of not having any sleep, uh, you feel like a zombie and not feeling yourself. Well, I've been dealing with this for quite a long time, right? And so I decided I was going to, well, I got on Facebook and got on Facebook. This might be too loud, y'all. Hold on. I might have to go in the house. Bentley's here with me. Say hey, Bent. Bentley, come here. Say, say hey, Bentley. Anyway, let me try to get in the house. I thought I was going to be able to do it. <clears throat> I'm trying to find a spot within the office. And of course, maybe this will work. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. It's just noisy out there. And I'm going to be rambling enough. I don't need no damn distractions. Let me move all this shit out of the way. Because it's this is not my space at all. I'm trying to get this office clean. Move Bentley. Okay. So in August, um, I guess I could take these off. In August, I came across, you know how Facebook memory um Facebook memory will put, you know, what she was doing, whatever, how many years ago, right? And so um, the memory popped up and the caption was insomnia. That's all I wrote, right? It was just insomnia. And so I was like, hmm, hmm, whatever, what's new? I looked at the date and the date was from 2010. And I was like, wait, this is 10 years ago I've been dealing with insomnia like a long time way longer than I had thought that I was dealing with insomnia let me tell it I thought I was dealing with insomnia um for about probably two. of course he wants to get out of here let, okay let me tell it I had been dealing with insomnia for about two two or three years right and so when I saw that Facebook post telling me it had been like since 2010, I really, really had to really think about what was going on in my life 10 years ago. And so that's why I'm here to share with you guys, because I think that a lot of times we just going, going, going and we get to a point to where we hit the we hit the fucking wall and that's what happened to me i hit the wall like the cartoon characters hit the wall and splat and just kind of fell down right because when i really thought about what i had been going through the last 10 years i had had a lot of stress in my life chronic stress um a lot of trauma um a lot of grief and you know after that and i'll explain let me just start 10 years ago um, I, well, March 2nd, 2009, 
um, my husband at the time suffered a brain injury and this brain injury left a very capable and alive and moving around and you know a very energetic person uh, debilitated and uh, totally debilitated to where he became totally dependent on my care and this get Bentley okay got Bentley in his crate anyway the injury left him totally bedbound and I assumed care for him um, after he got out of the immediate danger um, position and it was time for him either to go home or to into a, to, into a facility I chose to, to take him home with me just to try to see if I could take care of him at home to see if I excuse me to see if I could do it that turned into a nearly five-year journey that he was in a home with me at the same time for the most part I was still working as a nurse I hired caregivers to help me care for him and because they worked day shift I switched my nursing job and switched over to night shift working 12 hour shifts so I was working from 7 in the evening till 7 in the morning so Remember that I flip flop my body to accommodate this new normal that I had in my home. Okay. Um, so after I created the new normal again, I continued to work as a nurse, right? So I'm caregiving at home and I'm caregiving at work, right? And then I'm also taking care of my sister because now I've become like single, you know, single not discrediting my my amazing support system I had but you know essentially you're in a house by yourself you you know some single mother to her and just trying to manage it all okay and seemingly doing a good job because what turned into me want to just try to take him home to see if I could care for him ended up working out really well um as well as it could be as well as it could have been um and so yeah, it worked out. It worked out a long time, right? And so there was a time where I became exhausted with with caregiving and having him in the home. Um, it, it was almost like at the five year point. And um, I told my best friend at the time, I said, do not let this year pass by without me placing him in a facility. I said, because I need to do this to take care of myself because I'm exhausted because I had been I had already picked the place where I wanted him to go but for two years I struggled with placing him in a facility because even the, the fact that I was a nurse he received a lot of shitty care and I was advocating for him like a motherfucker they knew when I went in that hospital they had to have him right. So even the fact that I was a nurse, I was still very terrified of the care he would get in a long-term facility. So for two years, I didn't do it. And so going into that next year, I told my best friend, I said, don't let me do this. Don't let, don't let this year pass by without me doing it, right? I said, push me, nudge me. I said, don't let me, I said, cause I'm exhausted. So the damn year basically had went by, right? And it's November. <laughs> it's November. And finally, I was like, bitch, it's November. You have not done this yet. Do not do this. You need this help. You're, ex you know, really talking myself and you're going to be okay. My intention was still to keep his caregivers for them to be a, a team for me to be able to you know have them go check on him still look after him and still care for him but ultimately I was exhausted so here it is November 2014 I placed him in a facility and he died shortly after me being after him being placed there okay so that's no November 2014 and um 
you know, I just had to figure out how to deal with grief, right? Y'all know how grief is. It's nothing prepares you for the loss. And um, so at that time, my sister was almost um, a senior. And at that time, I was ready to come back to the South. I moved there to be with this man. And I had a beautiful life with him. We were married nearly 10 years when he passed. Um, and I didn't have any family there. I had a lot of extended, extended family. My best friend ended up meeting her right next door to me in my neighborhood, but I was ready to come back home because my assignment was done in Kansas city. So that's how I moved back here to Houston. Didn't want to go back to Louisiana, but I wanted to be closer to home. So but I wanted my sister to be able to graduate with her class, right? So I let her finish her senior year. We were gone, she graduated, we were gone 10 days later. Moved to Houston, got here, started working a nursing job that I absolutely hated and was just stressed about it. The Libra in me does not do imbalance and stress in going to some place of misery every single day. Um, and so I didn't last very long at that job because I was like, fuck that. <laughs> I said, well, I cried to work one time, you know, a few days later, coming back home from work, I cried. I said, what I'm not going to do is be crying, going back and forth to this place. Like, I'm not going to do this. Right. And so I said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to just go for it. I'm going to start this business. I've been loving skincare forever. You got to do this is the time to do it right now. Or you never going to, you're never going to do it right so then i jump jump off the ledge and started my business the business is a lot to get together especially when you're trying to do it right you're trying to do it legal and you're trying to do it in a way that's going to help people and so it's a lot of work and it's a lot of money and it's a lot of stress okay so you get this business up, it's running, and now you're trying to make money because then you're worrying about bills getting paid. Is this going to get paid? Am I going to have enough clients? Have I, you know, all this is going on when I first opened, right? And then Leary was, Leary was diagnosed with breast cancer, right? So it was a blessing that my business was not busy because I was able to accompany her to everything, whatever she needed me for. When even she didn't want me over there, I was still coming over there because that's just the type of person she is. She the strong, tried to be the strong one. So, you know, I went with, I walked alongside of Leary, you know, with this breast cancer and she's, breast, she's, she's cancer free now, you know. And so then after that, my business just started busy, busy, busy. Everything is going well. You know, bills are getting paid. I'm paying myself. Shit is going great. Hey, you know, you just flying high. Everything's great. And then 2020 hits. <laughs> Wall splat, right? Like the cartoon characters. All, all of us. This has been, everybody has a story for 2020, right? And so here I am trying to figure out what I'm going to do. I just feel like I finally got all this hard work of my business has finally paid off. And the shit is, is closed and what I'm going to do, I'm, I miss my clients. I miss connecting with these women and these men and I miss helping them. And I miss, you know, obviously I've always been in a caregiving role. I miss all that. Right. So I go through depression about that anxious about the world, you know, the racial, uh, the racism and the, the police brutality, like we all anxious and depressed, but I'm, I'm like nine years into this at this point. Right. This is nothing, 2020, damn near 10, 2020, according to Facebook memory, you know, and I, when I really sat down and thought about it, like I have been stressed out for a long freaking time, right? So when 2020 hits, you know, I'm maintaining, I'm in here trying to do the best that I can and I start to eat a lot and can start to gain weight. And then my dad is admitted to the hospital because he is COVID positive. And so, to not be able to get in my fucking car and go to him was torture. I am literally 
a few hours away on my sofa and cannot go, cannot visit, cannot see. So that was extremely hard for me. And within a week, he was dead. I said my final goodbye to him on a FaceTime call. And I just, I didn't have any more. But I kept trying to go, right? Because that's what the brain is used to doing. Kept trying to go. When you have to say goodbye to, what do you say? What do you say, you know? My nurse brain knew what it, what it was. My daughter brain so more grief, more trauma, more depression, more anxiety. And the insomnia got worse snotting all over girl <laughs> sorry <laughs> oh yeah. wipe it on thundercats <laughs> um the insomnia got awful awful so we're in september i didn't sleep at all in september but for two nights throughout the night now what i mean when i say i don't sleep at all i can fall asleep but every single night in the three o'clock hour, I'm getting up and cannot go back to sleep. So I was getting about four hours of sleep a night. And that content, that was the whole month of September. And I was a zombie. I have no memory, memory fog, memory loss. I, I'm just not myself, but I'm walking. I'm still making myself walk because I'm trying to dig myself out of this. I didn't drink a whole lot of alcohol, so I stopped drinking that because I know alcohol would make whatever the hell is going on with me worse. A, a coffee, I'm not a big coffee drinker, so I stopped drinking it altogether because I knew that coffee is not, the caffeine is too much of a stimulant, especially with anxiety. Um, you know, I'm walking around with these blue blockers on. Um, I'm doing every single fucking thing that I could do to get better, meditate, yoga, positive thoughts, you know, blah, blah, everything, right? And I'm still not getting better. So, in the September, Thundercat screenshot um, a neurologist picture and he said, you need to make an appointment. Do you want me to make this appointment or I'm going to make the appointment? So he found someone who specializes in insomnia and I am in treatment with her right now. We just began and she asked me in the appointment, the consultation, um, she asked me, she said, where do you think this all started? And when I thought about it, it was in 2009 when my husband got sick. My late husband got sick. Um, and it just was one thing after another, one thing after another, one thing after another. And she said to me, she said, even though, she said, when we have stress and it's chronic, and she said, we go through this chronic over and over, she said, it may seem like because we can get up and keep going, she said, it may seem like everything's okay. She said, but what we've done is we've raised our threshold for um, for stress. She said, so it never goes back down to zero. She said, this is zero. She said, you were here. She said, and every time you have a traumatic event, you know, something happens, more stress. She said, it keeps going higher. She said, and it never goes back down to zero. She said, so you know, when you stimulate your brain and you keep it going like this and keep it moving and keep it going. And of course the diet, you know, the lifestyle that we have here, um, doesn't help at all. The, the fact that we're always on devices that doesn't help at all. Like we like sick as hell, right? We are sick as hell. And a lot of times, especially women, we don't see how this shit progresses until we hit the fucking wall and we splatting down. And I, I'm here to say, don't do it. Stop yourself. 
interrupt the pattern like like Iyama says like because you're not gonna win stress is a direct pathway to disease and to death and I had to pull myself out of this because first of all I wasn't sleeping you know and second of all I was in my half bath downstairs and washing my hands and when I looked up I was just like round I looked at myself I'm like mm -mm. I had to talk with myself in that bathroom mirror I'm like bitch you going the wrong way you are going the wrong way you need to go the other way like this is not the way you want to go like I have always taken care of my body I've always been mindful of what I eat I've always been you know working out and making sure I'm doing the right thing I hate it I don't like it but I know it's necessary and I feel good after I do it and I like how I how I look I think a lot of us just try to work out to try to look good but this is a matter of health you know and so when I saw myself in that bathroom and just saw how much weight I had put on and I'm like I ain't give up all this good Louisiana food to still be looking like this. That mean I could have kept eating that shit the whole time because I've largely given up a lot of the things that I grew up eating and a lot of things that's really good and really taste tasty, but not necessarily good for you, not good for you at all. You know, so I'm just like, this is not a, a, a matter of diet, you know, because this is another thing that was going on with me because my stress levels were so high, have been so high for so long when you are stressed out like that, your body releases a hormone to help you deal with the stress. And the hormone is cortisol. And so if you have an excessive amount of cortisol in your bloodstream for an extended period of time, or when you have cortisol in your bloodstream, it raises your blood sugar, okay? Over a long period of time, that's not good. That's diabetes caused from stress, okay? So... That's what they were telling me that I was dealing, you know, I'm on my way to because of all the stress, which adds the extra cortisol in my blood, which makes my blood sugar higher. So this is not even something that I could correct, what wouldn't even cause my diet because the things that causes diabetes, I don't, I don't eat like that, you know, so the shit that I'm dealing with is a direct cause for me stress, me having all these events, me dealing with all this shit, trying to be a strong black woman, trying to do everything by myself, you know, and not being gentle with myself, not taking care of myself, not making myself a priority. You know how I thought I was making myself a priority? I was buying shit. I was buying things. Y'all didn't see me. I didn't clean out makeup. People in Kansas City thought I was a whole makeup artist. I was just buying shit. You know, so I want you guys to be mindful of, especially this year, we exhausted, we have experienced so much loss this year and we're all fragile. We're all depressed, anxious, and this is, it's a lot of uncertainty right now. And, you know, I just, I have, my friends have been super candid about what we've been experiencing emotionally. And I just want to implore you guys to make sure you check in with your mental health don't neglect it because you're not gonna win it's gonna eventually get you it's gonna eventually get you it's a slow process thanks to facebook memories it reminded me like bitch you've been like this has been going on like a long time and you need to step back and so that's what i did that's why i got off of instagram i stepped back because i didn't want to be on here acting fake I, you know acting like everything is great and I'm about to snap crackle and pop I needed to step back and take care of myself and so I appreciate you guys checking in on me seeing how I was doing and and I've just been kind of forthright and so I've just been taking care of myself like it's not always been good it's not always been good you know because the death of my father you know the you know it research when when you experience a death it brings up the you know the all the deaths that you've experienced before so then I started thinking about my late husband and all that and it's just like I have to get off of here and really be intentional as fuck in taking care of myself because I'm getting sick. Right? So, and if you need to do that, check out, take care of yourself because it is not a quick process. But all these little things that we go through and we get up and we keep going and we get up and we keep going, we're just raising our threshold for stress. We're damaging our body. Our body is keeping up with our shit, but eventually it's going to get enough of us and it's going to drop us off and you're going to...
but right so that's my spiel and my and my and my share with you guys i've been thinking about putting this out just trying to figure out the right time and i just was you know after my walk today i said you need to get back on it because so many of you guys have been reaching out and texting and, and, and messaging me i've been working uh, um, the treatment that the neurologist has me on she's given me some um, tablets to help me sleep they don't always work but when they did work I was able to get some sleep I have a lot of shit I've been working on for my business so I've gotten some clarity about that because honestly when the pandemic hit I just felt like damn I just had got a lot of momentum and was going and it's like okay what do I do now like so I struggle with that honestly a lot and um, you know so I've I figured it out like for real figured it out y'all y'all gonna be this is gonna be a huge surprise because I've surprised myself with this I'm so glad I did it and I'm, I can't wait to introduce it to you guys I'm thinking about going um, back to work very minimally again because my health is still I'm still under the, the neurologist care we still ha we just start in that process and I don't want to go um, and overstress myself because my body is very very fragile like fragile right now and so and then another thing I, I didn't didn't mention is on top of all this shit that I told y'all I've been dealing with your girl done started having all these high flashes <laughs> My birthday was September 23rd, so I am 45 now. And so now, within the last six months, these hot flashes, you know, they, they, uh, so y'all pray for me. But yeah, I just wanted to come on, show my face, share what's going on. I just didn't want to pop up back, you know, after being off for so long, be like, hey, y'all, what y'all doing? Well, let's keep going. It's like, let's, let me tell y'all what I've been going through. And let me tell y'all that, that I know y'all going through this too. And I want y'all to know that y'all not alone and y'all should get some damn help. Okay. And so I don't know. I just wanted to come on and like, I don't know. I may come on cause I miss y'all so much, but I'm going to take care of myself first and foremost. And I'll pop on as, as I see fit. Okay, guys, I hope you guys are taking care of you guys. And I voted yesterday. I hope you guys have voted. It was painless uh, here where, where uh, my state and, um, so yeah, I hope y'all taking care of y'all selves. If y'all not, y'all better start. Listen to me. Y'all don't y'all don't, don't do this because this ain't the way right here. Y'all turn that damn car around. Like I had to tell myself, you're going the wrong direction, boo. You know, if you have to get in the mirror and talk to yourself too, let yourself know you're going in the wrong direction because um, it gets rough when you get older, child. You got to keep moving your bones. You need WD-40 for your little bones. <laughs> And uh, you just gotta keep moving and kind of really gotta keep yourself um, fit in mental health area as well. Okay, we think about fit bodies, we want our stomach flat, we want a big ass, we want everything else, but we're not getting this right. And this is what's more important. Okay, so take care of yourself. I'll see y'all guys soon. Bye.